Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is time for the Let's Master English podcast. This is episode 58. It is January 18th for me. Again, today we have excellent sections. Number one, we have LME News. Then we have a fact from Country Shane, followed by Q&A. A couple of great questions that should hopefully help everybody. And then we'll finish it out with a very short discussion on the first part of our audio book club. This month's audio book, uh, book club the Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, and the assignment was part one all the way to part 21. It sounds like a lot. Next week, the assignment will be the first habit. So good stuff coming up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough chit-chat already. Let's begin. Where education and entertainment come together. Let's master English. Do it. Boarding pass. Phobias are widespread among people, just like superstitions. But, of course, the two are different. One a belief, the other a fear. But what if we could mix them together? Sheer terror, right? That happened last Friday. It was, you know, Friday, January the 13th. Friday the 13th! On that day, passengers flying from Copenhagen to Helsinki were boarded on Finnair Flight 666. That's the number of the beast. And their tickets read, Non-stop, CPH, Copenhagen, to hell. Hell? What? Hell? Hell sinky. The flight landed at 1341 on a plane that was 13 years old. Would you board or would you pass? That's the news and that's the question. Would you board that flight or would you pass? I think I would pass. Let's go back here. Uh, I'm going to read it really slow and highlight some key vocabulary words. Boarding pass. Boarding pass. That's the name of the story. Phobias. Phobias. P-H-O-B-I-A-S. Phobias are widespread. Widespread. One word. W-I-D-E-S-P-R-E-A-D. Phobias are widespread among people, just like superstitions. Superstitions, S-U-P-E-R-S-T-I-T-I-O-N-S. But, of course, the two are different. Phobias and superstitions are different. One, a belief. One of those is a belief. The other, a fear. So, which one is a belief? Phobia or superstition? Which one is a belief? Which one is a fear? Phobia or superstition? Which one is the fear? Hmm. I'll talk about that in a second. But, what if we could mix them together? What if we could mix phobia and superstition, mix it together? Sheer terror, right? The result, if we could mix phobia and superstition together, the result would be sheer terror. Sheer, S-H-E-E-R, terror, T-E-R-R-O-R, -R -R. sheer terror. That happened last Friday. Last Friday, last week Friday, today is Wednesday, about five days ago, last week Friday, superstition and phobia were mixed together. That happened last Friday. It was, you know, you remember, right? It was Friday, January the 13th. <gasps> Friday the 13th, ah! In America, Friday the 13th is very bad. 
on that day, passengers, passengers flying, so airline passengers flying from Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Copenhagen is a city in Denmark, in Europe, to Helsinki, Helsinki, a city in Finland. So, on that day, passengers flying from Copenhagen to Helsinki were boarded on, got onto a plane, Finnair Flight 666, 666. So, United Airlines, uh, what are some other airlines? Korean Airlines, Nippon Airlines, Finnair, Finnair, that would be the Finnish, the Finland Airlines, Finnair Flight 666. Uh, 666, that's the number of the beast. B-E-A-S-T, number of the beast. And their tickets read, their tickets, they had a boarding pass, they had a ticket, and it read, what did it say? The tickets read, non-stop, C-P-H-2, H-E-L. Non-stop, C-P-H-2, H-E-L. C-P-H, Copenhagen, H-E-L. Hell. Hell. So flight 666 going straight to hell. <laughs> it's true. What? Hell? Helsinki. On the flight ticket, they don't say Helsinki, they just say H-E-L. Hell. The flight landed in Finland at Helsinki at 13.41. That's 1.41 in the afternoon. On a plane, that plane that everybody was riding, that was 13 years old. The plane was 13 years old. Would you board or would you pass? If you had the chance to be on that plane, would you ride the plane? Or would you say, no, thank you. I'll go tomorrow. I'll go on Saturday. <laughs> I think for me, I would definitely wait until Saturday. Okay, so let's talk about some good words here. Uh, phobias. What are phobias? P-H-O-B-I-A-S. Phobia. Phobias are an extreme fear of something. And sometimes for no reason. So you might be afraid of spiders. Spiders. And there's no reason. A spider has never bitten you. A spider has never chased you. A spider has never tortured you. But you're afraid you hate spiders. Oh, get out of here. That is a phobia. Many people have phobias. When I was younger, uh, and I would be like in a high place, I was never afraid. But now that I'm older, when I get to a high place, I have a phobia. I have a fear of heights. I don't like being too high up. It makes me nervous. It makes me scared. That is a phobia. An extreme fear of something. Phobias are widespread. They are spread. To spread, S-P-R-E-A-D, means to push out, to spread, to push out. Like on a sandwich, you have some jelly or peanut butter. On a piece of bread, you spread out the jelly, you spread out the peanut butter. Widespread means spread all over the bread. So you take some jelly and, and you widespread. Phobias are widespread among people. So among people that you know in your country, in your town, all around the world, phobias are everywhere. Many, many, many people have phobias. Me, I have a phobia of height. Height. I don't like heights. Okay? Just like superstitions. Superstitions, S-U-P-E-R-S-T-I-T-I-O-N-S. -E superstitions are also widespread. Many, many people have superstitions. But what is a superstition? A superstition is when you believe in something that is not based in science. You believe in something, but there's no science to prove it. It's super, supernatural. It's above or beyond 
nature. In nature, we can see and we can prove with science supernatural is above nature. So, for many people, religion, God, angels, ghosts, the devil, those things are supernatural. They are above nature. This is the idea, the dictionary definition. So, phobia is a fear of something. Superstition is a belief that something outside of nature can affect you. So, for example, I believe that the number 13 is unlucky. Is there any science to that? No, there's no science. That's a superstition. And some people have a fear of the number 13. So here, phobia and superstition can be combined. But in some cases, they're, you can't combine them, okay? It's, it's, they're different. But here we can, sometimes we can. So what if we could mix, we could combine fears and superstitions together? Oh, then that would be sheer terror, right? Sheer, S-H-E-E-R, Complete, 100% terror, T-E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, horror, extreme fear. If you could combine superstition and phobia, it would be really, really super scary. That happened last Friday. Last week, Friday, superstition and phobia were mixed together. Friday the 13th, last week, Friday was Friday the 13th which is a very bad luck day in America. Why is Friday the 13th bad luck? There are many uh, reasons, there are many theories as to why it's a bad luck day, going all the way back to the Middle Ages, even going back to the time of Jesus. Anyway, you can look it up on Wikipedia. 13 is a bad luck number in America. Friday the 13th is a really bad luck day. So if you're going someplace and it's Friday the 13th, be careful. Americans just believe we have a superstition that Friday the 13th is bad, okay? Sometimes in America, if you go to a, a building, they don't have a 13th floor. There's no 13th floor because it's bad luck. People think that something bad will happen. So. Friday the 13th is a horrible, horrible day. On that day, Friday the 13th, passengers flying from Copenhagen, Denmark to Helsinki, Finland boarded a plane. They were boarded. The flight attendants said, come on, come on to the plane. They were boarded on Finnair Flight 666. Finnair, that's a big F. I-N-N-A-I-R, Finnair, flight 666. That's the flight number. 666? That's the number of the beast. The number of the beast, B-E-A-S-T, as in the devil, Satan, S-A-T-A-N. The number of the beast in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the last book, the book of Revelations, they say the number of the beast of Satan is 666. Interestingly, in the ancient Bibles, before the New Testament, they said the number of the devil or the evil number was not 666, but a different number. And I will tell you about that later. So anyway, Friday the 13th, flight 666. Oh my God, that's really terrible. And their tickets read, if you looked at the tickets, what did the tickets say? Non-stop, N-O-N-S-T-O-P, one word, non-stop, one flight, no stopping, CPH to H-E-L, to hell. CPH stands for Copenhagen, and hell stands for Helsinki. So if you look on your plane ticket, oh my God, I'm going to hell. Not H-E-L-L, -L, actually Helsinki, but it says H-E-L. Oh my God, I'm going to hell. So these people, Friday the 13th, Flight 666 going to hell. Non-stop. Straight to hell. What? Hell? H-E-L-L? -L? No, no, no. Hell. 
H-E-L-S-I-N-K-I. Helsinki, H-E-L-S-I-N-K-I. The flight, flight 666, landed at 1341, another 13, 1341, 141 in the afternoon on a plane that was 13 years old. Another 13, my goodness. And the question is, would you board or would you pass? If you had a chance to ride on this plane, would you ride on the plane or would you say, no, thank you, no, thank you, I will not. I'll wait till Saturday. Again, me, I would skip. Santa says she would skip. Uh, aviophobia, there you go. That's a fear of flying. Very good. Tamaso, excellent. I hope my pronunciation is right. <laughs> okay, so again, a few vocabulary words that I want everybody to know. Phobias, P-H-O-B-I-A-S, an extreme fear of something, sometimes for no reason. Widespread, something that affects a lot of people. Something that is spread out to many, many, many different people, different places. Superstitions. When you believe in something that is not based in science. It's not logical according to science when you believe something like that. Sheer. S-H-E-E-R. Complete. Absolute. A B. S-O-L-U-T-E, sheer, it's a great word. Terror, terror, T-E-R-R-O-R, -R -R. horror, horror. What happened with the plane? It landed, it was okay. Uh, terror, horror, extreme fear. Um, boarded, boarded, to be allowed onto the plane. The flight attendant boarded the plane, boarded us, boarded us passengers onto the plane. The flight attendant allowed us to go onto the plane. The number of the beast, the number of the beast, B-E-A-S-T, in the book of Revelations, in the New Testament of the Bible, Satan's number is 666. However, in older Bibles, before the New Testament, They say the number is actually 616. Hmm. So the old ancient history says 616, but the newer version, 666, I wonder. Non-stop, without stopping. And finally, pass. Would you pass? Would you skip? Would you not accept? That is the story. I'm going to read it again, and I want you guys to listen carefully. Here we go. Boarding pass. Phobias are widespread among people, just like superstitions. But, of course, the two are different. One a belief, the other a fear. But what if we could mix them together? Oh, sheer terror, right? That happened last Friday. It was, you know, Friday, January the 13th. <gasps> Friday the 13th! On that day, passengers flying from Copenhagen to Helsinki were boarded on Finnair flight... 666, that's the number of the beast. And their tickets read, non-stop, CPH to H-E-L. What? Hell? Helsinki, H-E-L-S-I-N-K-I. -E the flight landed at 1341 on a plane that was 13 years old. Would you board or would you pass? <laughs> How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. While 13 is the bad luck number in America, other numbers are worse in other countries. In China, four is the number of death. Nine is torture in Japan. In Italy, 17 can mean I lived. Past tense. In other words, I'm dead. Oh no. And in India, stay home on the 26th of every month because it's too dangerous to go outside. Did I miss an unlucky number? Let us know and be careful, everybody. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts.
It's time for questions and answers with Coach Shane. Our first question comes from Stan. Stan asks, well, first of all, he says, you say the flap T, F-L-A-P-T. The flap T pronunciation is like a D sound, the letter D. Yes, that's right, Stan. So an example would be, I have got, or we just say, I got a book, G-O-T-A. So in this case, the T, the G-O-T-A, got a, we're going to link the T, gotta. In the UK, British people might say gotta, gotta. But in America, we use a flap T and we say gotta, gotta, gotta. Okay, so it's like a D, gotta, gotta, gotta. Another example, I hit it. I hit it. I hit it. I hit it. Here's another example. L-I-T-T-L-E. Uh-huh. No vowels there, but still little, 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 little. Yeah, it's a flap T sound with a dark L. And here's another one. Got to. I've got to go. We've got a couple of T's together, and here too, we combine the T's and make a flap T. Gotta, gotta. So, I got a book. I hit it. Little. Gotta. I gotta go. So, yes, the flap T sounds like a D. Here's this question. What about two D's together? Do they also sound like a flap T or a D? And the answer is yes. And it, it seems like it might be an easy question, but these get confusing. So, L-A-D-D-E-R, ladder. L-A-D-D-E-R, ladder. And L-A-T-T-E-R, ladder. They will sound the same. Absolutely sound the same. Can we make the sound different? Sure. Yes, we can. So, L-A-T-T-E-R, ladder. The ladder. Absolutely a flap T, and when we do a flap T, there shouldn't really be any vibration. There shouldn't be any vibration like in a D. But ladder, 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 L-A-D-D-E-R, we can make that with vibration. Ladder, 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 ladder. Can you hear the difference? Once again, the first one will be L-A-T-T-E-R, the second one will be L-A-D-D-E-R. Listen carefully. Ladder, 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 ladder. Here's a great example from Santa on YouTube, live on YouTube. What about traitor and traitor? T-R-A-I-T-O-R and T-R-A-D-E-R. Traitor would be perfect British English. Traitor and traitor. Very different. But in America... Traitor, 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 traitor. Yes, we can make them sound the same, but again, with the T, if we say it fast enough, you're not going to hear vibration. And with the D, if you focus and you slow down just a little bit, you're going to hear a bit of vibration. Traitor, 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 traitor. Traitor. Can you hear the difference? It's very tough. Uh, so, again, guys, how do you know the difference? Well, you have to understand the story, the context. L-A-T-T-E-R and L-A-D-D-E-R are used in very different situations. Yes, they can sound the same, but if we focus, we can make them sound different. Okay? So, that's a very important uh, point there. Okay, next question. I see one here from Lela. Uh, what's the difference between wander and wonder? And I think you're talking about pronunciation. Great question. So, W-A-N-D-E-R is an ah, ah, wa, wander, wander. W-O-N-D-E-R is an uh, uh, wonder, wonder. So, it's the same idea as I want one. W-A-N-T, want, one. O-N-E. I want one. I wa-a-ant, wa-a-a-un. 
I want one. Wander, wonder. Wander, wonder. Same difference, okay? Those, and the, to explain the sound, it's an ah, which is actually a short O, and an uh, which is a short U. Wander, wonder, okay? Another question here. Uh, this is from Larry, Larry Lands. I've always wanted to learn real pronunciation and sound linking, how to put sounds together and sound reduction, how to cancel sounds. And we can add one more sound blending. There's cancellation and blending. Cancellation would be when the T is canceled. For example, internet, we say internet. We cancel the T. Internet is perfect, but generally we say internet. And blending would be did you, did you. Many times we say did you, did you. We make the D and the Y, we make it a J. So uh, Larry wants to learn real pronunciation. He wants to learn sound linking and I and I. And he wants to learn about sound reduction, cancellation, and blending. And Larry, I have classes absolutely perfect for that. Real pronunciation, now I'm talking about American pronunciation, not British, not Australian. Real, real American pronunciation, real sound linking, sound reduction, for free. We have uh, almost 300 lessons for free www.youtube.com slash daily dictation. D A I L Y D I C T A T I O N. Daily dictation. And you can find that on our website, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash TV. Okay? And then you'll see a list of channels. We have, I think, five or six uh, channels. And Daily Dictation is one of those channels. We have about 300 lessons. They are all for free. And in the lessons, I explain everything about real American pronunciation, sometimes British, sometimes different styles, sound linking, and all of that reduction. So important. This is a, a great channel. If you're not a member of that channel, it's free. Okay, you need to join, do the lessons. And if those lessons, those lessons are pretty short. Okay, they're usually, you know, 30 seconds. Um, if you like those lessons and you want longer lessons, then get free lessons. I have 11 free lessons that I send out. Again, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. You sign up. We have 11 lessons, eight lessons that focus on listening, pronunciation, linking, reduction, and three lessons that focus on speaking. The speaking classes are great. It's about pronunciation, intonation, rhythm, and flow. And you can get those for free. Also, if you sign up, you get our newsletter, which has some very special pictures of me. <laughs> Every week, some really silly pictures of me. Nothing too bad. And that's it for the questions. So keep those questions coming in. I promise to do my best to answer them. Thanks so much, guys. It's time for the book club, everybody. The audio book club. Again, the book we are listening to is called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And you can get this book absolutely for free just go to audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. You can sign up, and uh, you do need your credit card, but you can get this book for free, um, and it's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it's about 13 hours long, and the author is Stephen Covey, and he also recorded it. So this is very nice. Dr. Covey died uh, I think a year or two ago, but he left us a uh, treasure. This book is truly excellent. I have read it, uh, I would say, three times. So this is actually the fourth time I'm going through this book. But hey, if you are familiar with the book, then that is the seventh 
habit. He has other books too. They're great. He has books for kids. He has a book called The Eighth Habit. And uh, it's just really nice. So it's perfect for the beginning of a new year. Why don't we try and develop some very good habits? Why not develop the seven habits of highly effective people? So this is an audio book. And listening can be much more difficult than reading. So I assume some of you, if not many of you, are not only listening, but also reading the book. And that's fine. I don't mind that. In fact, what sometimes I recommend is read the section first and then listen to it. That works really nicely. Read the section first and then listen to it. So we have 21 sections. That was the assignment. And it sounds like a lot, but it wasn't too bad. And there's not too much that we need to focus on. The most important thing, in my opinion, for the opening of this book was to understand what he means when he says inside out. Inside out. Change, if you want change in your life, change starts from within from inside you. It's very difficult, many times impossible, to change something that is outside you. But it is absolutely possible to change something inside you. And if you can change something on your inside, that will affect the outside. It might affect how you see the outside. And in fact, it might change the thing on the outside. Who knows what will happen? But the important thing he wants to tell us is if you want to change something, you cannot expect to change something outside. It's very difficult. You cannot expect something outside to change. It's almost impossible. It has to be in you. So let's make sure we understand this. A simple example is you are married and your wife or your husband does something that you don't like. Perhaps they smoke and you don't like that. So you want that person to change. You want your husband or wife to stop smoking. So we can wish and pray and holler and yell and nag every day, every day, every day, but it's really difficult to change that person. Changing somebody is almost impossible. Changing something outside you is very tough. So if you have somebody that you love who smokes, well, what can you do? It's really difficult to change that person. Maybe you can change yourself. You need to find something within you that will influence the other person to change. It's not easy. It's very difficult. And some people outside you, some people will never change. He gives the example of his son. His son as a young boy was trying to be an athlete, a baseball player, but he was terrible. He was no good. So mom and dad, him and his wife, they said, okay, we need to get him extra training. We need to help him. And they would help him. They would buy him equipment. They would get him an extra coach, an extra trainer. And they would do their best to improve their son, to get their son up in level. 
and they would take him to another game and the other kids would laugh. They would tease him and he would feel terrible. He's no good. Mom, I'm no good. I'm no good. No, son, you did very good. We just need more practice. You just need more practice. They want to improve their son. They want to make him better and better. But it, it wasn't working. And then they decided to change from within. Okay, if our son can't be an excellent baseball player right now, what can we do? How can we change so that it doesn't bother us, so that it, it's better? And they finally said, from now on, when we look at our son, we will love him at his ability. And we will realize that he might improve and he might not. Maybe baseball is not his thing. Maybe he will be good in something else. So let's encourage him to find what it is that he's good at. Let's stop trying to make him something he isn't. Let's appreciate him where he is. Let's encourage him to try different things. And if he finds something that he likes, let's enjoy that with him. Once they did that, they were able to love their son even more. And their son suddenly had all of this stress and pressure taken away. He was free. Mom and dad weren't bothering him anymore. And now he could make his own decisions. And you know what happened? He got bigger. He did become a good baseball player. But he also developed other great habits and hobbies. And he developed himself into a great boy. Mom and dad wanted to create this baseball star. But it didn't work because that was outside. Then they realized if they want to change something, it starts from within. So you need to think about this. I need to think about this. We all need to think about this. What are things that we wish we could change? And how can we change ourselves? in order to affect our feelings, our beliefs, and things outside. Change starts from within. Very important chapter to understand that. Then Dr. Covey talks about the seven habits. The first habit, be proactive. Habit two, begin with the end in mind. Habit three, put first things first. Those all discuss dependence to independence. Dependence to independence. Habit four, think win-win. Habit five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Habit six, synergize. Well, it sounds a little bit complicated. These three habits focus on interdependence. And then habit seven is renewal, continual improvement. So we're going to talk about each of these habits step by step, habit by habit. And the assignment next week is to read or listen to all of habit one. Be proactive. So I want you guys, again, to listen to the unit, listen to the chapters, and start making plans about yourself, how you can be proactive. And I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you. Again, if you are uh, subscribed to our newsletter, you can just respond to that letter and tell me, because I do see those emails. Uh, so sub sign up for the newsletter, everybody www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. That's actually going to give you 
uh, some lessons that are free. You don't have to study them. If you want, you can. You can study them anytime you want. But also you will be uh, receiving our newsletter. And our newsletter goes out usually every Tuesday. And I make this podcast on Wednesdays. So I would love to hear from you. Listen to Habit One. Be proactive. If you have a question, if you have something you want to add or share, please send it. Just respond to the newsletter and I will be sure to include it. If it's good. If it's not good, I'll still read it, okay? And I'll take all your ideas and questions and thoughts and I'll include it into next week's podcast. This has been ABC, Coach Shane's ABC, Coach Shane's Audio Book Club. Thank you, Dr. Covey, for such an excellent book. Next week, we will study Habit One. And that's it for this week's podcast, LME Podcast 58. Be sure to check out the website, www.letsmasterenglish.com. LME TV shows you all of our YouTube channels. LME Radio shows you all of our Podcast. So once again, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash TV or radio. Okay, just click on those and uh, you can see everything. And don't forget, I'd love for you to join our classes. We have two great classes, DDM and PERF. We also have AE, Action English, but that class is full right now. Uh, when we get a slot open, I will absolutely tell everybody. I hope that you are signed up for the newsletter, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. Get the newsletter. Get some funny pictures of me and my life and also some great information. And when we have a sale, uh, I'll let you know that in the newsletter too. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I hope it was beneficial. I'd love to hear from you. And together, let's master English!